Introducing the engineering design process to your classroom. Before introducing the engineering design process to your students, you first need to reflect on what does engineering mean to you? What is your understanding about engineering? When first bringing about the idea of engineering to your classroom, you might consider talking to your students about what an engineer is. Describe engineers as scientists who solve problems using technology. Engineers are simply put, problem solvers. Engineers never shy away from getting creative. They think outside the box, they think about the world around them, and they solve problems by being creative. Being collaborative is one of the reasons engineers are highly successful in their field. You have to work together, use the strengths of your team, and collaborate to solve those problems. Another trait of engineers is that they're critical thinkers. They're able to analyze and really importantly, reflect on the things they do and the designs they create to continually improve upon them to make them more successful. So you're probably wondering, how can we even begin the conversation about engineering in elementary school? Keep in mind that it's important to think big, but start small. Incorporate small elements of engineering in everyday work with your students. Let them guide you and let their ideas become creative and explore on their own. You will be surprised at the ideas your students come up with. Give them a small topic and ask them what they wonder about, what they could change about things if they could, how would they change it, and let them guide you. What needs to change in your classroom in order to implement engineering? The good news is, not a lot. Most of the tools you need are things that can be found in recycle bins, materials around school, or things from home. Incorporating engineering isn't as scary as it seems. Children are naturally inquisitive. They want to know more about the world around them and how it works and how to make it better. The best thing you can do as an instructor is to encourage your students to explore their questions and keep questioning. According to the National Science Teachers Association's publication of Science and Children, teachers can benefit from the engineering design process as well. It helps to practice what you preach. By doing the engineering design process and participating in it, it creates a positive gain in one's ability to define engineering problems and synthesize and evaluate problems and clearly explain and express what engineers even do. Engineering is Elementary or EIE.org has created a simplified version of the engineering design process that works well for students. This is a great way to implement engineering in your classroom by first implementing this tool, this graphic organizer. Now keep in mind, the engineering design method is not the scientific method, although they are similar in some ways. By definition, scientists use the scientific method to make testable explanations and predictions about the world. A scientist asks a question and develops an experiment or set of experiments to answer that question. But engineers use the engineering design process to create solutions to problems. So when is it appropriate to use the engineering design process? Well, if your lessons need to focus on real world issues or problems, you could be guided by the engineering design process. These lessons will immerse students in hands-on inquiry. It helps them with open-ended exploration. It involves students in productive teamwork. If you have a lesson that allows for multiple right answers and can reframe failure as a necessary part of learning, it might be a great fit to bring in the engineering design process. 
If you think you have a great lesson or a great idea for incorporating the engineering design process, you might be looking for resources. These resources teach engineering, National Academy of Engineering, and Design Squad Global all have prominent social media presence on both Facebook and Twitter. Engineering is Elementary, or EIE.org, has a wonderful free resource in their newsletter. It includes lessons, up-to-date information on engineering, and is highly recommended. While not free, a membership to the National Science Teachers Association does come with multiple benefits, including resources such as journals, publications, articles, and up-to-date lesson planning and resources for all members. The engineering design process is a series of steps that engineers follow to come up with a solution to a problem. Many times a solution involves designing a product, like a machine or computer code, that meets certain criteria or accomplishes a certain task. This process is different from the steps of the scientific meth method, as I've mentioned before. If your project involves making observations and doing experiments, you should probably follow the scientific method. But if your project involves designing, building, and testing something, you should probably follow this engineering design process. The steps of the engineering design process are define the problem, do background research, specify requirements, brainstorm solutions, choose the best solution, then do developmental work, build a prototype, then test, and importantly, redesign. If you're still wondering what the engineering design process actually looks like in projects or activities in the classroom, the following is an example of a project I did in my classroom. For any lesson in your classroom, it's so very important to go back to the standards for that, that subject matter. For this lesson in this project, my first grade students were working on the science standard of 1 PS 4-4, which is use tools and materials to design and build a device that uses light and or sound to solve the problem of communicating over a distance. To begin the lesson, I presented our students with two problems that needed to be solved. Problem number one was that teachers often blow the whistle at recess, but students fail to hear it and know when to line up. The students needed to solve the problem of communication by using light or sound to build or create a device that will solve the problem of not hearing the whistle at recess. Problem number two was that of becoming lost on a hike. Students were asked to solve the problem of communication using light or sound to solve the problem of being lost in the woods to signal for help. Once the students described the problem that they were interested in solving, they were then asked to explore ideas and come up with brainstorms for how they would like to solve it. This was done all on the very first day of a five-day project. On the second day, students with like ideas were paired together to create collaborative teams. Once the students were grouped collaboratively, they were asked to create a prototype and draw a diagram of what they would like to design. Then they made a list of all the supplies they thought they might need to create that item or that creation. This was all done on day two of the five day project and the students were then able to come up with a list of supplies that myself as the teacher was able to provide for them for day three when they were asked to start building a prototype and creating the device they had imagined. On days three and four, the student teams then used the materials to build their design. They tested it to see if it would work. They reflected on what was wrong or what could be better and made changes and then retested. This was a cycle that they repeated throughout days three and four until they had a prototype of their completed design ready for day five. Students use recyclable materials or things they brought from home for this zero cost project. It also included very small amount of prep time for myself because it was the students that had to come up with their um, expectations, their plan, and begin their project. 
I just gave them a problem to solve. Each day of this five-day project included small activities that were all components of the engineering design process. This project began slow. The students' reflections were that it was very difficult to start thinking. Staring at a blank page when you weren't sure what to do was probably the most difficult part of this activity for most students. But once they got started, there was no stopping them. This image shows the teams with their finished projects. They were so excited, but really did not want to stop the engineering design process. So we continued it for the following week during our daily five independent work time where students were still able to keep evolving their design and creation to keep making it better and better. I hope this video has you excited to try the engineering design process in your own classroom. It's not too scary. Let your students guide you. Mine sure guided me and we are having a great time being engineers.